for everybody. So we should expect a lot uh, in the Kipkeno Classic. Absolutely. In fact, let's now talk about the Kipkeno Classic. Now, this is a continental gold tour event. It's got core events, non-core events, and national events that are going to be competed for. Now, the top names are actually in the country. And uh, there is a lot that is going to happen there as well. Talk about names like Shelly Ann Fraser Prize. I understand the Kenyans are giving her a name because they love her in Kenya and she also loves the country, so they've given her a Kenyan name. The Shakari Richardson who's there as well. How big is this event, according to you? Uh, number one, you know, first and foremost, uh, the Kipkeno Classic, you know, has improved, and especially when it comes to the athletes that it attracts. Uh, we have the, the Hamatoa. Uh, Anita, uh, yes. I think from, from Poland already, yes. she, she has yes. come. It tells you she, she's an Olympic champion. Uh, Shelly Ann Fraser, you know, she's an Olympic champion as well. Uh, if you look at this race, the number of athletes that have attracted Bernard, it tells you that everybody wants to learn uh, to run in Kenya. It's not only for the, for the prices that is there, but more important uh, for the times that they are able to post. But we must say it as well. You put good money in it, you will attract the right kind of athletes. Well, absolutely. I mean, that is the most important because most athletes, we, at athletics at the moment is a business. So yes. Because they came come, from Doha. Yeah, immediately at the door. You can imagine. And that. some of them were in Botswana. And they had to come And here. then coming to Kenya. Yeah, because, you know, I mean, uh, if you look at the top races, you know, that we have, yeah, we have, uh, I think we are going to have uh, 100 meters, both men and women. Uh, we will have 200. It is attracting already Shakira, you know. Uh, Shakari, Richard Shakari Richardson, yes, Richardson yes, you know, yes. she's going to run uh, 200. Yes. You know, something that I wanted, interesting, Bernard, I would have wished that they were going to put the two, maybe they were running 100 meters, <laughs> but uh, because that could <laughs> have been You know, been the two of them also know each other as competitors. Of so maybe course. they separated themselves and decided one enters this one, the other one enters this other one, so that they don't burn out themselves. And, you know, well, maybe they'll take that as a core event. But I think they would have given uh, something Kenyans to remember. You know, absolutely, because you, you can imagine. But again, you know, when it comes to 100 meters, of course, you know, we have a number of guys, but I expect... Uh, what are you Manuel looking forward to seeing? What, what, what are you looking... Do you think there's going to be a wild lead in the Continental Gold Defin event? Definitely. In which event? event? 100 meters. 100 meters. 100 meters men. And it, we may... Even women, if the two are meeting, there could be a chance. Uh, but the fact that, you know, Manjala has the home crowd... Yeah. Definitely will uh, do. What it. about the middle distance races? 1500, eight, uh, 800? Do you uh, think there's going to be anything there? Because we're also losing grip of the 800 meters. I know. And if you look at the. That was your event. Well, yeah, it was my event, and uh, and then after that, Rudisha, you know, still took it again uh, to 2016 uh, 19. Uh, but if you look again, I mean, we ha we still have a career, you know, that is still running yes, well. But unfortunately, yes. I think that is not going to run here. But we also have 400 meters. We're forgetting we've got Massey in 400 meters, and that's yes. challenging for that as Ab well. Absolutely, and you know, um, something that I'm happy with the Kipkeno Classic, uh, Bernard. Yes. You know, it has attracted over 130 something athletes uh, from outside the country. So that is why I say it tells you who are these. 130 athletes who have chosen to run Kipkeno Classic. And that is why there's so much money being pumped into it as well. The latest being Safaricom, who also um, came in with uh, the uh, contribution. We've got... Uh, le let's listen to what they said when they were giving their, you know, their portion of the sponsorship for the Gold Tour event. We strongly believe in Kenya, and we know that running athletics, marathons, a part and parcel of our heritage as Kenyans and that's why we decided to partner with Athletics Kenya in this series and we have uh, done a partnership for 9.2 million where we are giving in kind and in cash towards the Kipkeino Classic. Uh, this being the fourth edition, we're excited as Safaricom to be part and parcel of this series and we look forward to partnering in many more athletic events around the country. There's been a season of ceremonies as we come very close to the actual event on Saturday 13th. We are very happy that uh, all these ceremonies are coming to support the Kip Kaino Classic, fourth edition. So today we have got Savaricom, welcome them here uh, to come and join us in supporting this event, which has grown from the first event up to the fourth, which we are doing today. I think um, we know that the athletes and the visitors have kept arriving, including last night. Some of them arrived last night, and now we have got quite a number of them who are preparing, who are going to compete here in Nairobi. Well then, that's uh, Jack Tuwe. He is the um, Kenya Athletics President.
and he's talking about just the good things of it. I don't know if we also had to talk up to Kip Kano himself, you know, Kip Choke Kano. I well, know yeah. To speak to I, him as well. It would have been very Yeah, it would have been to well. understand, yeah. But there's something, uh, Bernard, that I would like to, to mention, especially to our viewers, that, uh, you know, again, in this event, we have the javelin. You know, let's not forget. Yeah, you know, yeah, the we field have, events. Yeah, the field events. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. I mean, uh, we have this guy Anderson Peters, uh, a 24-year-old. You know, for for him, I understand. You know, the way he started his uh, throwing. You know, he was throwing stones. You know, uh, <laughs> over mangoes. <laughs> and uh, right now, you know, I mean, he's he's somewhere. So he's going to to face yes. a stiff con competition. You know, with uh, with Julius Yako. And that's wow. why I say it is full of uh, so many so exciting many intrigues, activities. Yeah. yeah, we'll see what happens there. Yeah. That's a very interesting story as well. But let's move on now. Again, this week is that week, well, over the weekend, where we had uh, the president of uh, World Table Tennis here in the country, and in fact, here in the studio as well, to talk to us about what was going on in table tennis. And um, there were new champions, especially in the men's event, where Quadria Runa of Nigeria was beaten, and was beaten by Omar Hassan, who is an Egyptian. Now, this event was, there was an African event in it, and there was also the world qualifier in it as well. Now, the two Egyptians, Hannah Gordi and, um, and um, Omar Omar Hassan won the women's and the men's event. Now, Hannah Gordy beat a fellow compatriot, Dina Meshref, in a repeat of last year's Lagos finals. Now, Dina beat um, uh, Mawa Al Dabi 4 1 in the semis. And uh, Sarah Hanfu of Cameroon lost 1 4 again to Hannah. So, Hannah was reigning supreme in this. But the big story here is that the big man, Aruna, lost to the youngster. Uh, Omar Hassan. I don't know if you followed this as well, Captain, and uh, what you think about it, because the lady in winning the women's singles became the youngest ever player to also defend the title. She's only 15. That is uh, one interesting, you know, because tell me a 15-year-old, if yeah. you look at so many tennis players, you know, they, and, and the they, question they, is not is not even being the youngest to win, but, but the youngest to defend as to well. Defend. Which and means anything she does now, she's still gonna be the the youngest on it. Do you remember what us what we have been talking about uh, here? You know, someone who was a defending champion, just like the same way that we are doing a lot of analysis when it comes to football, at, uh, athletics, and marathons and all that. You know, you hardly get someone who comes in there to defend and being able to win. And you can imagine at that age, you know, when uh, she's able to defend that title it tells you you know the future uh you know is very bright but even just for the country to also host that kind of event eh, is, is is a lot of congratulations to the kenya table tennis association the president was here i think uh, andrew mudibo you spoke to him yeah, yeah yeah actually we discussed about them and, and something that i was happy is that you know this event at the moment now is attracting a lot of uh, interest with the, with the kenyans you know remember that these are events that are not non-traditional uh, Bernard, you know, th those uh, events that we, are not, we have not been doing it, you know, so many people doesn't even understand how they are playing. Mm -hmm. But something that uh, I think was interesting was that uh, they are looking at the government to be able to inject, you know, some finances on uh, to this, uh, the federation. Yeah, because the one thing that breaks my heart is just the empty stands, you know, in, in a very good auditorium, very colorful, but no, you know, no spectators. And I'm, I'm even wishing they had even just invited but schools but to come and watch. But, but and, unfortunately, you know, you know, this is a non-traditional event, you know, you it don't is, expect yeah. that... Uh, yeah. to happen but i think the fact that you know we can talk about it then definitely it will attract more people all the best then yeah. okay so that was well done by the kenya table tennis association congratulations the afcon under 17 is currently on in 